Hey, uh, first of all, I want to say I'm very grateful to be here today after two years of pandemic. Giving an in real life conference is amazing, I missed that. So thanks so much for coming because you're part of this great success. So now let's talk about changing the behavior of a running Node.js process from the outside. I'm Vladimir Dotyokem, I'm a technical lead at Datadog. Uh, I used to work at this very cool startup. We did application security, it was screen, and we got acquired by this amazing company named Datadog, where we can bring application security to our customers. So if you're already using Datadog, ping me, because I want to show you some exciting stuff. I'm also a Node.js collaborator. I'm part of the Node.js core security team. So when Liran told about those vulnerabilities in Node Core, I'm usually uh, one of the first to learn about them. And I'm also the author of the async local storage API that you should be using. That's the only proper way to track context in Node.js. And that's it for the introductions. Let's go for the serious business. So let's talk a simple Hello World server. It's simple Node.js code. It's even ugly. I mean, I haven't done that in a while. And it has no logs, which is a programming bad practice. You want to log what happens in your applications, right? So it still doesn't have any logs. There is an easy fix for that. Just change the code and redeploy. That's what normal people would do in that situation. So you can add a log, a very meaningful log, like to do, add some more logs, and redeploy. And because I was bored during confinement, I decided that this was too easy and that I didn't want to do that. I wanted to not have to redeploy the code. I wanted to inject logs in the server without restarting the server while having the Node.js process still running. So is it possible? Yes, obviously, otherwise I would not be giving this talk, or that would be a good scam. And because I'm terrified about this talk, let's do a live demo. It will make things easier. So here I've got the code of my live server. It's not shared. I don't know why. OK. Demo effect. Why don't I have that? Up. It had to happen, and I'm terribly sorry about that. Does anyone know why I don't have my full screen? Uh, mirror. Is it better? It is way better. OK. Sorry about that. It's called the demo effect, and that's totally normal. So I've got this live running process, and I will just start it for you. And the goal is to inject logs into it. So I will start the node process. Now we've got a server running. And if I curl on it, well, I just get OK as a response, and it has no logs. Tada. Uh, now the goal of the game is, can we put logs into this server without restarting it? Let's have fun. Uh, you can notice that I decided to log the PID of the process. That's a secret tool we need to use right now. So I will send a signal to this process. It doesn't change anything. Now I run another piece of code. Still nothing. And now, when I run my curl command here, we've got logs in the server. So we haven't restarted the servers. We just ran some cryptic operations in other terminals. And now it logs stuff. So the legitimate question is, is it a scam? No, it's, it really happened. The real legitimate question is, how did I make that happen? So let's go back to slides. And now I will explain to you all of the steps that we used here. So just to say it once again, we had a server that did not log anything, and now it has logs and logs the endpoint. So what happened? We have this running process. It's simple Node.js code. And there is this very, very cool thing in Node.js, is that you can enable the debugger on a running process. So your process is running, and if you've got access to the machine, you can send what's called a signal directly to it, in that case, SIGUSL1, and that will enable the debugger. The debugger, basically, it's a WebSocket port listening for connections. 
So that's why I decided to log the PID in my case, because I needed it to send the signal. I could have found it with PS and other things, but that would have made the demo even more disastrous. So I just use it. And next, you saw that I used the kill command. So kill does not always destroy your process. You can pass it a signal to say, hey, I want to use you to send a signal to this process by PID. So in our case here, SIGUSL1. It also works with the process.kill command in Node.js, which is pretty fun. You can actually send a kill signal to another process from a Node.js process. Uh, you can check Node.js documentation for more of that. So we started the debugger. That's what's on the left-hand side. Debugger listening, and then we've got a WebSocket port. We started the debugger meaning that we could have connected using Chrome Inspect or any debugger, like the one in VS Code, the one in WebStorm, and do anything you can do with the debugger that we all know and love. But since I was in confinement, I was bored, and I didn't want to use regular stuff. I wanted to understand what's behind the debugger. How does the debugger communicate on a WebSocket to change what's happening inside a process? So let's use what's called the Chrome DevTool protocol. It's actually really cool, is that anything you can do with the debugger is part of a text protocol, text and object protocol. So when you use the debugger, even in Google Chrome, like from Chrome to Chrome, you're using this protocol. So in the Node.js version, it has domain, like debugger, profiler, runtime, that enables you to access objects within the, the heap of the process and to change them. When you are using that with the, um, with the browser version of the protocol, you can even interact with the DOM, you can interact with nodes, and you can do very cool stuff. So if you want to understand the magic behind debugging in Node.js and JavaScript in general, you want to check that. That's not very beginner friendly, but amazing. So let's use that. And let's write code that use that. And I'm pretty sure everyone is mad at me for having small, so small images, so we will zoom a bit. At first, we, use a pro uh, 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 we will use a package that's named Chrome Remote Interface. That's basically a client for the debugger protocol, so we don't have to write everything in the WebSocket ourselves. So we call runtime.enable. That means we enable the runtime domain. All the methods in the protocol are part of a domain. They are sorted in little boxes, and you need to enable the big box to access them. So we will enable the runtime one, meaning that we will call method from the runtime domain. OK, and now we run a command that is client.runtime.evaluate, meaning I want to evaluate code in the other process. So just taking a step back, we are not in the process of the server. We are in another Node.js process that I called to inject. That's another file. So we are remotely controlling a Node.js process from another Node.js process here. So we will run arbitrary code on the server process. And we will run require http.server.prototype. That actually returns the prototype of the server class. Does it return it really? No, because we are in another process, so we can't access the object itself. It's not even existing in our process. But we've got a pointer. So if you remember doing C or anything with pointers, not JavaScript, hopefully, we've got a pointer. That's basically a remote pointer from a process to another. So we know that server.prototype, the object, we can communicate with it by using the pointer is here as an object ID. And we can do operations on it, like uh, getting the list of objects that implement this prototype. So that's the first thing we, did the, we do at the top. We call a method called runtime.queryObject, and we provide the prototype object ID, which is exactly the number at the bottom right of this screen. So this returns us with a list of pointers toward the objects that implement this prototype. So all the HTTP servers in the server process. OK, but because it's a remote object, we get a pointer to the array. So now we need to get the properties on that array. 
and that pointers to the array which have numbers and that gives us the list of servers. So at the top, we, get, we take the first result of this array and we've got the unique instance of HTTP.server. Okay, let's go to something funnier. Let's run remote code once again. Uh, I just pollute the process with a method I call patch listener that I require from somewhere else. We'll see that right after. And then uh, on line seven, we call function on our server instance. So it's our HTTP server instance. And we call process.patchListener on that. OK, so the legitimate question now is, what's inside patchListener? Well, we use a very cool module named Shimmer that enables us to override code in JavaScript. So what we do is we run that on all the instances, on the instance of HTTP server. So this method I created is just doing one single thing. It removes, it takes all the listener for an event on an event emitter, it patches them and places them back. So in our case, on the line four, we take all the listener on the request event on the HTTP server, we remove all these listeners, and then for all of them, we replace them with this function uh, on line 10, request console.log original apply. Original apply means let's call the original method, the one, the original listeners that we have removed from the HTTP server, and then we put them back on line 16. So one step back, I take all the event listener and the request event from the server, I replace them with a method that logs something, then calls the original method, and puts them back in the right order on the HTTP server. And that's pretty much every instrumentation library doing when you have instrumentation such as APM in your Node.js application, they will do stuff in that, uh, in that ball range. Okay. So now, because we are not mean, we will clean up a bit of things. So we call delete process.patchListener, so we remove our pollution. And then we can close the remote debugger internally from the Node.js process by calling inspector, that's a core module, and we call close. And voila, we can close our client, and we inject it dynamically uh, logs into a running process. Wasn't that hard, was it? OK, so what did we learn? That's probably the takeaway part of the talk, so that's interesting. You can remotely enable the debugger in Node.js. So let's say you've got bugs in production that you can't replicate locally, and you need to have one last resort method to understand what's happening in the bug. Well, SSH to the machine, enable the debugger locally, SSH tunnel to your machine, and use the Chrome Dev tool remotely. I wrote a blog post on screen blog so about that to hint for memory leaks, um, and that's uh, a good read if you're interested in that. Uh, I've got uh, live examples with Heroku, so you don't have to fight too much. With the DevTool protocol, you can do whatever you want. You have access to pretty much anything in the heap of the instrumented pro pro uh, process. You can change its behavior, you can query objects, you can inject arbitrary code. And if you use the Chrome debug protocol on a, on a web browser, you can change pretty much anything, know what is the exact size of the node. Uh, it's actually extremely powerful when you want to do advanced QA on a web application. Sometimes the tool you need are not exposed in the debug protocol. So for instance, the profiler in the debug, uh, in the debug tools has a polling, uh, a polling time frame. And it means that if some methods are, are called shorter than this polling time frame, you won't see them in CPU profile. You can change that by using the debug protocol. So it's like the god mode of debugging for JavaScript. Feel free to use it and abuse it. This was not a talk about code injection. This was an intro to the DevTools secrets and how to leverage them. How you can, right now, build debugging scripts that will find bugs. How you can SSH to a server and find bugs you can't replicate locally. How you can analyze a heap in live directly with the DevTools. Thanks so much for your attention. Let's keep in touch. Follow me on Twitter. I'll share the slides. <laughs>